Okay, so students, good morning and welcome to another episode of Power Up Your English. So, in this video you will find the solutions to your exercises. Quindi, qui avrete tutte le soluzioni agli esercizi della scorsa settimana. Brilliant! So, let's start with exercise number 14. You needed to do a little bit of vocabulary, if you remember. So, click on the box next to the adjective which have a negative meaning, do you remember? So, difficult, ugly, terrible, strange, boring and controversial have a negative meaning. Quindi queste parole, andate a cercare la traduzione in italiano, hanno un significato abbastanza negativo. Attenzione che anche strange... È, ha un significato negativo, strano. Strange si intende come un qualcosa di non completamente positivo. Very good. Now, complete the sentences with adjective from exercise 14. Qui avevate gli aggettivi, dovevate completare il testo con gli aggettivi. So, here is the solution. Do you remember you had more than one answer? Più di una risposta era possibile. So, here are the possible answers to your exercise. Thank you. Now, read the text and match them to the names. Vi ricordate, dovevamo prima fare il match dei names. And then, we needed to listen to the audio as well. Quindi avevamo Robin Williams, Prince and Frida Kahlo in order. Quindi in ordine erano queste. Now, let's listen first to the audio and then let's look at the solutions. Quindi, quindi ascoltiamo l'audio prima e guarderemo le soluzioni. Unit 4. Exercise 16. A. He was an American musician. He was an excellent guitar player and singer. On stage, he wore amazing clothes. Purple Rain, 1984, is one of his most popular songs. That's Prince! B. He was an American actor and comedian. He first became famous in a TV series called Mork and Mindy. In 1998, he won an Oscar for Goodwill Hunting. He was a brilliant actor and very funny, especially when he played the part of Mrs Doubtfire. That's Robin Williams! C. She was a Mexican artist. In 1928, she married the painter and revolutionary Diego Riviera. She wasn't very famous in her lifetime, but now her paintings are very popular. They are very original and interesting and full of colour. It must be Frida Kahlo! And of course it was Frida Kahlo! So brilliant! Well done! Then let's move on. We did watch the grammar video and here the answer was the same for regular and irregular verbs. Quindi non cambiano le negative come si formano le negative le questions. is the same for regular and irregular verbs. Ok? Quindi è la stessa cosa che i verbi siano regolari o irregolari. Number 18. You needed to complete with positive or negative form. There you are. Brilliant. Let's move on to the next page. You remember you had a map to complete with the time expression. So let's have a look at the time. Oh, sorry. Wrong file. Let's have a look of the to the time expressions. And here is the solution. So when you say you can say 10 minutes ago, last night, yesterday morning, on Monday, Friday evening, on my last birthday, remember, on, and in May 2016. Ricordatevi la differenza tra on and in. Qui abbiamo una data specifica. Uh, and here we only have a day or um, uh, occurrence. Okay, very good. Now let's listen. What did Harry, when did Harry last do these things? You remember we had A, B, C. Very good. So, one is B, two is A, 
3 is B and 4 is B again. Very good. Now, exercise, eh, this was personal, exercise number 23, era personale, eh, quindi non c'era una risposta giusto corretta. Brilliant, here we needed to check it, complete the rule. Quindi abbiamo visto eh, questi defining um, pronouns, quindi pronouns who or that for people and mm -mm for things, which or that. Quindi potete sempre usare that, ma ricordatevi la differenza tra who per persone e which invece per definire le cose. Here we needed to choose the correct alternative, quindi dovete scegliere l'alternativa corretta tra who and which. And here is the solution. Now, do you remember? Guess who? Guardate questo indovina chi da fare questo guess who. There you are. And these are the solutions. Brilliant. Let's move on to our reading practice. You remember, practice makes perfect. La pratica eh, fa la perfezione. Quindi dovevate leggere il testo. Before you read, you had these answers. And then you needed to find the words that mean. Dovevate trovare il significato di queste parole. So let's have a look. Quindi obiettivi, goals, realizzare, to achieve something. L'allenatore is the coach, probabilmente questo lo saprete già. Infanzia, ve l'ho detto prima, is childhood. Phase è stage, fase scusate è stage. And fiducia in se stessi is self belief. Belief vuol dire credenza, to believe vuol dire credere, quindi credere in se stessi. Very good. Uh, here you needed to answer the questions and here are some possible answers. Quindi qui avete delle uh, risposte possibili. So when do most people think we can learn new skills? Okay, when we are young. Solitamente quando siamo giovani è più facile imparare nuovi skills. Malcolm Gladwell theory, do you remember? It says that you need 10,000 hours of deliberate practice. Se voi vi allenate per 10.000 ore, eh, diventerete bravissime degli esperti in qualsiasi cosa. So start practicing your English. And what does deliberate practice differ from normal practice? Qual era la differenza tra deliberate practice and normal practice? Deliberate practice, dovete, you concentrate, dovete concentrarvi on more difficult things, in cose difficili che non sapete fare. Mentre invece, diciamo, la normal practice è praticare cose che sappiamo già fare. And why did some people think it was impossible? Because it was too old. Quindi è vero o no che quando cresciamo non possiamo imparare nuovi skills? Actually, Gary did. Mm? Quindi Gary ce l'ha fatta. His childhood dream did become true. Era diventato realtà. And why are some skills relatively easy to learn? Perché ci sono delle regole precise. Quindi con delle regole precise, magari come la grammatica inglese, it's very easy to learn English. È molto facile imparare l'inglese perché ha delle regole. Brilliant. Um, then you need, you know, before you listen, you needed to say what a child prodigy was. And poi avevamo sentito queste radio interviews. We listened to these radio interviews. So let's have a look at the solutions. So, Lita Andre is an artist, um, Ryan Wong is actually a pianist and Alma Deutscher is a composer, the new Mozart. Avevamo visto è quasi il nuovo Mozart. Poi avevamo visto che non finivano così bene quando crescono i child prodigies, magari perché hanno troppa pressure troppa pressione su di loro. Now listen again and complete the sentences. Dove avevamo sempre è lo stesso ascolto che voi avete, potete riascoltarlo con calma e dovevate inserire le parole mancanti. So that was your last exercise. Questo era l'ultimo vostro esercizio. And uh, these are the solutions. So, brilliant. Thank you very much. So you have completed your unit. So we've uh, finished with our unit. Please study the negative and the questions if you don't remember them. And don't forget to study the irregular 
verbs. So thank you very much for your attention. It's all uh, from me now and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.